I learned so much from my patients. Um, actually, one of my patients a couple of years ago taught me about the uh, concern for um, vitamin B12 with metformin. Um, <clears throat> more and more people are using metformin. As uh, I've mentioned several times, there are studies like the TAME study. Uh, TAME would actually um, do something similar, putting metformin in the water for uh, folks over uh, 60, 65 years old. Um, the CDC is pretty clear that about one out of 13 people that need metformin are actually taking it. So as you, uh, if you're considering metformin, one thing to remember is that there has been some uh, association of decreased uh, vitamin B12 with metformin. And I'm going to cover that briefly in this uh, article. This is an article in Diabetes Care. It was a couple of years ago, uh, 2012, Association of uh, Biochemical B12 Deficiency with uh, Metformin Therapy and uh, vitamin B12 supplementation. So here's a couple of key points here. Biochemical. The reality is, um, <clears throat> as they saw in this study, you can get some um, apparently significant uh, decrease in vitamin B12, but still not have any symptoms. No anemia, no neuropathy, no depression, none of the other symptoms associated with uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, when you say significant, uh, that's one of the, the questions. Well, if it doesn't cause any symptoms and it's not causing any harm, how significant is it? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. The other thing is uh, the point about uh, vitamin B12 supplementation. One of the things they found was that the typical um, a sp supplementation, especially the multivitamins, uh, don't really have enough to impact uh, this biochemical level of uh, decreased uh, vitamin B12. So real quick, how did the study work? Uh, they took adults 60 years and older um, with or without type 2 diabetes. Uh, with diabetes was 1,621 and, and with type to diabetes was 6,867. This was from the NHANES study, National Health and Nutrition uh, Examination Study. So basically, that's a study that's been going on for decades. It, the whole idea is to look at um, our, popul our American population and see what's the typical uh, nutritional and health status. Um, it oversamples minorities, it oversamples uh, folks 60, 65, and older. What they did with this study, uh, after they look, they do get blood samples uh, with a lot of these, um, the folks in this study, and what they did was basically look at uh, serum, serum B12 con uh, concentrations. They labeled uh, less than or equal to 148 um, as uh, borderline deficiency and 148 to 221 as, uh, excuse me, the opposite. Less than or equal to 148 as deficiency and 148 to 221 as uh, borderline. I think I've covered most of the uh, issues in here. Uh, yeah, well, a couple of the, their comments regarding deficiencies. Um, their point was, in they're saying the same thing that all of us are saying. As we get older, we tend to have higher prevalence of type 2 diabetes. They're listing it as 20%, uh, over 20% at age 65. That's a very, very low number. And again, <clears throat> uh, what kills you with diabetes is the cardiovascular disease, not the sugar. And the cardiovascular disease occurs during those one, two, 10, 20 years prior to a diagnosis of diabetes that you have prediabetes. So that's the time when you should be focusing on your diet, your lifestyle, and even taking metformin. So again, this 20% is a way low uh, uh, underestimate. Now they did go on to say that um, they saw a deficiency in 6% 
and mild biochemical deficiency in 20%. So, <clears throat> now here's one of the, the, if you look for standards on what to do on, on that, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Forces and other government agencies really don't have any yet. Why is that? It gets back to the issue of they're trying to figure out is it significant or not. So, <clears throat> uh, if you uh, have a concern about it, sure, go ahead and, and um, monitor that. Actually, there is one other point. There are studies that have been done to look at how long does it take after um, starting metformin to start having some of this problem? And it looks like about four years. So <clears throat> if you started metformin uh, over the past few years and you're curious or concerned about this, you can get serum uh, vitamin B12 level. Now, what to do about it? <clears throat> Again, taking normal supplements may not uh, be very helpful. Taking um, specific vitamin B12 supplements appears to be more helpful, and for sure, vitamin B12 injections. Just a, uh, a figure out of this study. Uh, these, the black bars are folks that had diabetes um, and metformin. These folks had uh, diabetes, no metformin, and these folks had no diabetes. The point was, uh, it's clearly, and this is this side of the graph is mild vitamin B12 deficiency. This side of the graph is uh, the serious, or the higher uh, biochemical. We say I said serious, but again, we're still not seeing a lot of um, biological significance other than just the monitoring value itself. So again, what to do? As I mentioned. Uh, you could ignore it. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of the standards committees are ignoring the whole thing because they're not seeing significant disease with it yet. Um, or you could go ahead and monitor and uh, treat. And you can give uh, supplements. Thank you for your interest.